Hello guys, you're welcome back to our channel. This is the Cool X Educational Media presenting to you live the practical solution to the physics Y question for 2022. In this practical, we're going to be giving to you the procedure, the analysis, the plotting and interpretation of the question. According to the exam, the first question is on equilibrium and we have with us a one meter rule and then a set of mass uh, masses about 20 gram each one is going to serve as a hanger which we are going to be used to hang we are going to be using to hang in the um, on the thread so what is the procedure of this particular experiment and what are we expected to do and how do we carry it out that is what we are going to do now the first thing we are expected to do would be to find the center of gravity of the meter rule. So to achieve that, I'm going to be hanging the meter rule on top of this knife edge in order to determine the balance point, which we refer to as the center of gravity. You know that this is a uniform meter rule. As you can see, the zero end here and the hundred end here, meaning that our expectation should be that the center of gravity is going to be just about the 50 cm point. Let us confirm whether that is true. All right, so here is it. You can see that the meter rule is firmly suspended here horizontally. So what is the center of gravity? Taking a look at this point, you can see that the center of gravity is exactly at the 50 cm mark. So we are going to note down the center of gravity CG to be equal to 650.00 cm. Take note of the reading error in reading a meter rule. So you note it not as a whole number. So having done that, we are also going to proceed to measure the mass of this meter rule. So I'm going to use a chemical balance, drop the meter rule, and then also note the mass of the meter rule. So here is my chemical balance. I'll switch it on and then allow it to settle. You can see the pointer is at the gram, gram mark. I'll set it to zero. All right, so it's at zero at the moment. So I can take my meter rule and drop on top of it. So I drop the meter rule on top. This is what I have. It's reading, I see 17.1, oh, 171.3 grams. 171.3 grams. So I'm going to record that as the mass of the meter rule. We are going to use this in the course of the experiment. 171.3 grams. So proceeding, we are going to be hanging a mass of 20 gram at the 5 cm mark. So once we hang in that mass at the 5 cm mark, we will now adjust the meter rule. Of course, you know that the center of gravity is going to, it's not going to be, be the same now once this mass is hung. So here is the mass of 20 gram mass using a thread hung at the 5 cm mark. So I'm going to find the new balance point once I find that, then I'll record the distance from that point to the point where the mass is being hung. So here is it. So this is what I have achieved so far. Just for confirmation purposes, here is a 20 gram mass hung at the 5 cm point, and here is the point of balance at the 45 cm mark. So here is the remainder of the meter rule at, to the other end. So this is the meter rule balanced horizontally, as you can see here. So we can take notes of the distance from here to here. If this point is at point 45 and here is at point 5, it means that the distance from here will be what? You take note of that, 45 minus 5. That will give you 40. And we record that as our A, as our Z. We are going to call that Z and record it on the table. So the first for mass 20 gram, our Z is 40. So having achieved this, 
we are going to proceed by adding another mass, this time another 20 gram mass to the hanger such that we can also find the Z, the distance between the mass and the pivot. So I'm going to proceed to adding this mass of 20 gram into this setup. So once that is done, here are the two 20 gram masses I have been able to hang in. You can see that the balance point here, the mass is still hung at the 5 cm mark and the balance point here is at 41, approximately 0.3. You can see here, 41.3. If you trace it using a pen as I have done or a meter rule, you see that it's at 41.3. So if we have it at 41.3, remember that this hanger is fixed at 5 cm all through the experiment. So it means that if we want to find our Z, we are going to do this minus this. So 41.3 minus 5 will give us the value of Z when we have 40 gram mass. So we are going to keep on repeating this until we get to the 100 gram mass. So I will record this and also come back and do the 60 gram mass quickly. Okay, here we have the 320 gram masses hung. That is making it a total of 60 grams. Also maintained at the 5 cm mark and then we have the meter rule balanced at this point 38.2 approximately as you can see using my line so the point of balance is 38.2 i'm going to record my value of z by finding the difference between these points so as i proceed here are 420 gram masses hung still at the 5 cm mark now the new balance point would be at point 35.5 as you can see here approximately at point 35.5 i'm going to the meter is also here balanced horizontally as you can see so i'm going to record the difference between point 35.5 and 5 cm and record it for z and finally you have here the 5 20 gram masses hung and then still maintained at the 5 cm mark now we have the balance point here to be at 33.1 approximately you can see 33.1 approximately so i'm going to record this complete the tabulation of my my table and i'll show you what my table looks like and of course we would plot a graph once we plot that graph i will come back and interpret the meaning of that graph and then we would answer the short answer questions that followed and that that will be all stay tuned okay guys here is how the table looks like taking a look at, at this table you will notice that every of um, what we're asked to do has been tabulated we are given a mass of 20 40 60 80 and 100 grams you can see them represented with their reading errors attached and then in the experiment that we did i already told you that we are meant to measure z and the Z was actually the distance between the new balance point to the point where the max was actually hung. So uh, the values of Z has also been recorded using the reading error for a meter rule also. And then as part of the experiment, they said we should evaluate these other three unknowns. So you can see here we have Y equal to z minus 5 so our value of z here minus 5 will give us this and then x is our value of d d originally is our center of gravity or at, at the beginning we measured that to be equal to 50.0 so d minus what we've gotten as our z here would also give us so 50 minus 40 will give us 10 and that also for the other values and then finally, we're meant to find the value of V, which is equal to this X that we just finished computing, and then the Y on the other hand. So once we do that, we also get this sets of values. So you can see that this experiment is well dependent on the Z, meaning that if the Z is wrong at any point during the conduct of this experiment, the implication is that the outcome of all these three unknowns will also be affected. So here is how the table is. And then on top of the table, you will see where we wrote down the basic components of what we measured. The center of gravity, which was 50 cm, the mass of the metal, which we measured using the chemical balance 
to be equal to 171.3 grams. We denote that as M0 and then the D, which is the distance from one end to the center of gravity as 50 cm. So here is our table of results. Now, if you check the question, we're asked to plot a graph of M on the vertical axis and V on the horizontal axis, starting both axes from the origin. So if I plot a graph of M against V, this is how the graph is going to look like. You can see it's a straight line graph making contact with the horizontal axis first. So if the intercept in the question is to the vertical axis, it means that it's going to be negative. So I extended the line to the vertical axis to give us negative intercept. So a graph of M in gram against V is a straight line graph. So having done that, we are meant to find the slope of the graph. That is the next question, the slope of the graph. And then we also determine the intercept on the vertical axis. I just said that now. So the slope would be the change in the M axis over the change in the V axis. Once we do that, you can see the values there, 80 minus 20, all over 0 0.77 minus 0 0.29. The answer is going to give us 125 gram. And then by measurement from the, from the graph, our intercept is minus 15. So it should be well marked and also well recorded to get your full mark. So I haven't answered that. The next question will be to state precautions that are taken to ensure accurate result. Of course, you know that this is a mechanics experiment, so we need to avoid drought majorly and then parallax error. So if there are wind effects around the area where this experiment is being conducted, you need to minimize that or reduce that. So owning, offing your fan rather, offing your fan would be a good practice to enable you get accurate results, especially to help the meter road to balance. So you state that I avoided draft and then you also state that I avoided parallax error in reading the meter rule amongst other uh, precautions that you would take um, during the experiment or you, you obey during the experiment. Aside of these other uh, experimental questions that they ask us, there are some two short answer questions also that have been asked here. One of them would be, under what condition is an object said to be in a stable equilibrium? Under what condition is an object said to be in a stable equilibrium? Of course, we know about stability of an object. There are three types of equilibrium in terms of stability. One, stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium, and neutral equilibrium. So the condition for an object to be in stable equilibrium will be that, number one, the body, that particular body would have a low center of gravity. So number one condition will be low center of gravity. Number two will be if it has a large base. Number three would be that the potential energy must be at its lowest. Number four is that if it is slightly displaced from the equilibrium position, the line of action of its wave will pass through the base. And then number five would be that if when slightly displaced from rest position, it does not topple over, meaning that it will return to its original position. This and many more are some of the conditions for an object to be in stable equilibrium. Finally, if you look at the question also, there is a calculation question there where we were asked to find the distance of a support from the 100 Newton body for it to balance horizontally. In that question, it said a uniform beam of weight 50 Newton has a body of weight 100 Newton hung at one end of it. So if the beam is 12 meters long, we are asked to determine the distance of a support from the 100 Newton body for it to balance horizontally. Of course, to answer this question, I have to sketch it for you. Look at the sketch here. So you can see that the new, the, the new balance point is where the pivot is. For it to be 12 cm, remember that the center of gravity is a uniform rod and the, the, the length is 12 cm, meaning that the center of gravity is going to act through the 6 cm point. So, and the weight of the body is 50 Newton. 
and we said that the center of gravity of a body is the point through which the resultant weight of a body acts from. So it means that the 50 newton uh, is going to, which is the weight of the body, is going to act through the 6 cm. So that is why you are seeing 6 cm here and then the 50 newton to your right. And then according to the question, they told us that the 100 newton is being hung at the other end. So you can see it at the other end is at the 0 cm mark and then the 100 newton is hung. So they're asking us the distance where the support is going to be and it is unknown. So we label it as X, meaning that if your left hand side is X, meaning that the remaining distance from the center of gravity to the new pivot would be 6 minus X. So using the principle of moment, we know that the sum of the clockwise turning moment is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise turning moment. So about this point. So multiplying uh, and we know that moment is equal to force times perpendicular distance. So the clockwise moment is equal to 50 times or bracket open 6 minus x. And then the anti-clockwise moment is equal to 100 times x. Solving mathematically would we'll get that x is equal to 2 cm. So what you have here is a breakdown of your YEC 2022 experiment in physics as it concerns equilibrium. Everything that we have um, displayed here is the practical solution to that particular question. I believe that it was actually very easy for you to understand. Look out for the other questions and of course from other experiments following suit or following through. Stay tuned. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. God bless you.